Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I know it's hard, you know, after, after two days after the party to listen to these kind of topics, uh, regulatory, tax, legal topics, but uh, my task here is actually to make you alive. Um, because um, I got 15 minutes, but now I have just one or five minutes, so I make it quickly. Uh, I will show you just one slide. But before I'm going to this particular one slide, then um, I have a question to you. Uh, please raise your hand who thinks that uh, legal or regulatory uh, thing is unclear to you. Not much, I would say. Uh, less than half, if I'm correct, and if I can see you correctly. Okay, uh, PwC has an answer to the question. Uh, our firm, PricewaterhouseCoopers, regularly, uh, each year, conducts global uh, blockchain uh, uh, um, research and uh, among um, global businesses, executives. Uh, and according to this research, um, number one uh, concern among the businesses has been a regulatory uncertainty. So uh, the applicable legal norms, uh, yeah. regulatory environment has been unclear uh, for the businesses. And it's a big or one of the major obstacles uh, for the adoption of blockchain as a technology among several businesses, as well as uh, it hinders uh, um, innovation, uh, emergence of new digital assets. Okay, uh, as I said, I have to make it really quick. And I will show you just this slide. And uh, I drafted a, a timeline for you to understand maybe one picture, a thousand words, okay? Uh, in order to understand, is it Wild West? still there here or not okay it started back in october october has been very special for blockchain and bitcoin communities in october 2008 it started okay uh, so the first important milestone for reg from regulatory uh, aspect i would say is 2002 again october uh, when european central bank issued a uh, very comprehensive uh, report uh, regarding virtual currencies uh, and its schemes. And I would say this is the first milestone where a very prominent institution at the EU level uh, made uh, statements regarding virtual currencies, including cryptocurrencies, and also delivered their opinion about the classification of these kind of digital assets. Okay. Uh, but still, it was quite quiet uh, some years uh, until uh, June 2014. Okay, uh, a Financial Action Task Force, a non-governmental body which you know sets uh, anti-money laundering standards uh, worldwide, issued uh, uh, a recommendation or a guidance uh, which included definitions. Uh, of virtual currencies, including uh, cryptocurrencies. And uh, it was very important, again, milestone, because it provided some clarity to the market participants, to the regulators, to the lawmakers, to the community. Uh, next important milestone, I would say, in order to understand where we are at now, um, is actually October, again, October 2015 when uh, the highest court uh, in the European Union, European Court of Justice, uh, delivered its uh, long-awaited judgment uh, on a value-added tax dispute. Uh, and uh, the, the European Court of Justice uh, said very clearly that uh, Bitcoin uh, transactions, uh, Bitcoin exchange-related transactions should be considered as traditional, ordinary financial services, and according to value-added tax directive uh, adopted uh, back in 2006, uh, provides value-added tax exemption for these kind of services. 
Uh, and it means that uh, the fees on the Bitcoin exchange transactions should be value-added tax-exempted, uh, European Union-wide. So uh, it provided very important uh, clarity to the market, to the regulator, to the lawmakers uh, in relation to value-added tax treatment of cryptocurrencies. Okay? Uh, and even Estonian tax board, Estonia is an e-country, absolutely. But somehow back then, Estonian government wasn't very eager you know, to accept these kind of uh, uh, innovations. Uh, and uh, after um, uh, the judgment delivered by the European Court of Justice, European Tax Board changed their opinion regarding the value of the tax treatment of cryptocurrency exchange uh, transactions. Okay? Uh, what happened at the end of uh, 2015 uh, was a tragedy. Uh, terrorist bombing in Paris, Bataclan, Rock Club, if you remember. And then uh, the politicians, the members of European Parliament, uh, started to consider cryptocurrencies uh, as evil, I would say, or as a mean uh, to finance the terrorists. And the uh, European Council issued an invitation for the European Commission to regulate. First time in history at the EU level to regulate cryptocurrencies uh, in relation to anti-money laundering and contra uh, financing of terrorism uh, law. And um, uh, due to this, or thanks to this initiative or invitation, uh, in July, European Commission made a proposal regarding uh, the uh, new anti-money laundering directive, so-called fifth directive. Uh, this directive was uh, uh, actually uh, finally adopted, um, uh, finally adopted uh, last year in July, but before the adoption uh, or entry into force, in, sorry, uh, of the f uh, fifth uh, anti-money laundering directive, Estonia as a member state was very eager, which is a not ironic statement from my side. Estonia uh, already adopted uh, the fifth directive back in November 2017 into our own national anti-money laundering law. <laughs> so we, uh, we were the first uh, member state uh, to implement uh, the requirements and obligations coming from the fifth uh, anti-money laundering directive. Uh, and this uh, directive, by the way, must be transposed into national laws uh, by January 10, 2020. So, and right now, uh, member states are implementing this directive into their national laws, okay? But there will be a specific uh, um, presentation after mine about uh, this uh, area. And this year in June, again, a Financial Action Task Force uh, issued uh, or adopted a recommendation uh, uh, number 15, uh, which also uh, gives guidance and recommendations uh, regarding cryptocurrency exchanges and some other uh, cryptocurrency ecosystem participants. So, so a member oh, not member states. It's a, it's a it's a global guideline. So uh, um, the governments uh, should take measures uh, or shall take measures in order to adopt those recommendations within one year, as from July 2020, into their own national AML laws. Uh, so this is. This is kind of a timeline uh, about the regulatory activity, at least mainly at the EU level. So, as you can see, uh, during or within last years, uh, the reg regulatory activity has been uh, intensified, and, and, and in certain areas, uh, as, uh, specifically in relation to combating, anti con combating uh, money laundering, Mm, European regulator uh, and uh, European lawmaker has made a kind of bespoke rules for this particular area, providing much uh, needed and weighted uh, uh, clarity uh, to the ecosystem. Uh, I will move very quickly, so who wants to 
look at my slides. I guess uh, you can get those slides afterwards. But I will, uh, I have to, sorry, I have to uh, end my presentation. But uh, as, a, as a funny note, uh, there is also another way how to provide some clarity to the community. And this is a Japanese way, I would say. By the way, uh, last year, uh, they composed in Tokyo uh, a girl power band called Virtual Currency Girls, consisting of eight members, each representing uh, cryptocurrencies. And the idea behind this uh, pop uh, band is you know, to promote cybersecurity and also cryptocurrencies among younger generation. So I would say this is uh, another way how to you know, provide more clarity to the market. So thank you very much. Uh, I'm sorry I had to uh, rush, but uh, uh, we are in delay. Thank you very much. <laughs>